the best and worst WWF road agents? Ah, that's a good one. Okay. I liked almost everybody. I'm going to say the best. Uh, Dave Hebner, Tony Gurria. <laughs> Shane Douglas sat in that seat last week and said Tony Gurria was the absolute worst agent he ever had. Oh, my God, no. I love Tony Gurria. I wrestled Tony Gurria. I, to this day, at the meet and greets, he's there, looks good. We go over different things. Um, Strongbow to a point because I considered the source. He's funny, yeah. too. Um, you don't want to be late with Strongbow either. People complained about Lanza. I never had him. I just do what I'm told. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not... <clears throat> excuse me, you're not being afraid. You're doing your job. At other walks of life, you would get, if you don't do your job, you get written up or you get fired. Yep. In every walk of life. So, let's see, who else? Uh, Grizzly Smith. <laughs> the only thing I didn't like, he's not a technical wrestler and he's critiquing my work. He's an agent. Oh, uh, Barry, uh, I don't think you did. You went over by a minute. Oh, my God, it was a good minute, Grizz. Give me a break. You're doing your job. I didn't take it. So, you know, I didn't take it like that. Georgie Animal Steel. Um, I don't know. People didn't like. I don't know. I, I think I got along with everybody. I just, it was pretty easy. Did what I was told. And if you come out, hey, Barry, you went too long. So I owned it. You're right. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll make it better. The good part about me, and I'm proud of myself, if I went over in a match, we want 12, and I went 15. The three minutes were good. Because if those three minutes were shitty, I'd probably be shit-canned after multiple matches. Mm. So, and they also, and I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't for glory. I was getting off on that match. I didn't want to go home at 12. I want to get this in. I want to do that. Not my shit. Everybody's. The big secret is get the match over. Not just you, unless you're told by the big man. Mm -hmm. It's all about you, Barry, or I'll replace you. Uh, People don't know that secret about getting the match over. You I, understand that statement? No, yeah, I understand it. Absolutely. It I've... doesn't mean get it done quick, shower, go to the pub. It means get Barry over, get Owen over, get Earl Hebner over to referee, and get the fans over. You do all that with a great story, you have a great match. And if you got two good workers, it's flawless. It's I've got, magic. I've got a couple more for you. Rene Goulet. I liked him. I liked him. I liked his accent. I liked it. What, what Funny story. I worked with him second match in Raleigh, North Carolina for Crockett. He had to put me over and I don't think he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nothing personal. Crockett loved all baby faces over. I'm doing what I'm told. Hey, and one more, Jerry Briscoe. Okay. When I first met Jerry, uh, he's did well in the wrestling business. Successful entrepreneur, the body shop and whatnot. I would see him at spot shows in Florida, Lakeland Civic Center. And I would always say the same thing. Hey, where's Jack? And I'm just kind of ribbing, but kind of meaning it because I'm a mark for Jack Briscoe. I'll admit it. I grew up on him when I was 14, 15, 16, and he'd say the same thing. Oh, he's in the stand selling popcorn. <laughs> Weird ass answer. Um, but otherwise, uh, Jerry Tree, it was fine. Um, nothing to speak of. I mean, he was an agent, and uh, I was only in on meetings with him, going over different things, maybe three times, four times. So I've got one more for you. I've got one more for you, sure. and it's going to lead into another story. Nick okay. Bockwinkle as a WWF agent. I like Nick because, first of all, his verbiage, his articulation, it's very similar to Shane Douglas. Yeah. Uh, his graphic detail on working, and as a heel, he was cool. The suit, the look. And then he gets in there and he's wrestling and he's and he's a coward and he's the total heel, but it's good looking. 
And I respect that. And I respect the AWA champion. And he would talk to me soft-spoken and correct certain things, but not too much critiquing. I guess he liked my stuff because similar, similar uh, technique. Mm. So, With yeah, but I, I like Nick. Always carried himself as a gentleman. Always looked good. Uh, yeah, that's that's an honor to be uh, Nick Bockwinkle, an agent, and and being in his presence, in, in my eyes. With uh, with that being said, I'm sort of leading into this next story. Uh, I, I, I don't know how many people know this, I imagine not too many, that you, as far as I can tell, had the very last match with Don Morocco in the WWF, and I think this was on a European tour, maybe Italy. And uh, shortly after this match, this has nothing to do with you, but Don and Nick Botwinkle were having issues back and forth. Do you remember anything about this? This is the first time I've heard this. Oh. First of all, I don't remember that match. In Italy, he was there. I was there. It's, it's on the network. It's actually on the network. I did. I worked with him. I didn't know that. Okay. Most of my memory is pretty decent. Some you just forget because it's been a long time ago and hundreds of matches. And I've worked with him a lot. I don't remember putting him over in Italy. I remember him being there. Mm. I don't remember anything, how you hear through the grapevine, telephone, telegraph, telewrestler, um, about Nick and Don Morocco. Wow, well, that's weird. Well, Greg Valentine is there with you today, and he tells a really good version of that story, so you need to ask him today.